What is up everybody? I am going to be building these three awesome Sky Raiders. So I'm putting together all three decal versions of these bad boys. And you can see there's a Navy version and two Air Force versions. One's gray, one's camo, and one's blue. Pretty awesome airplane, pretty awesome kit. You can find them on eBay, uh, not too expensive. And um, yeah, this was, uh, this was a big project, it was a lot of fun. So as you can see, it comes in your standard gray molding. Um, all of them are in one package, which I actually like this. I don't mind it being all in one package because then if anything goes wrong, you only have to check one bag. Whereas if they're in 10 different bags, you could miss a part that accidentally fell off the sprue. So I don't mind this, this packaging. And you can see there some instructions and some decals. All right, let's crack this baby open. First thing we're going to start off with is the clear parts. Clear parts were very nice. Uh, they're very clear. There's no touch-ups to do with them or polishing or anything like that. And you can see on these, on the fuselage, it has really good uh, receded panel lines. And that, that makes for a good model right there. Uh, receded panel lines make for a real good model. So keep that in mind while thinking about building one of these. And the actual, the blue version is, is actually still in existence, still flies today. So um, if you ever wanted to see that, take a picture with it, build a model about it, whatever, this kit actually does resemble a real um, flying A1D Sky Raider today. So, um, and, the, and the details are, are really good in this kit. So just think about that. Sometimes I go through phases where it's like, I don't really want to build this because there's no real versions of it where I could actually see it in real life and and this one actually did bring it through for me so there's a real version out there this blue one and yeah it makes it a little bit easier to model going off of a real airplane that still exists today which is still awesome you can see all those wings come in different parts you can have it folded up or folded down um, you know I, I put them down just because it looks better um, the the inside things that went in the inside of the wings, they weren't that detailed. So having this kit just have its wings all the way down is just better. So here's some bomb attachments and stuff like that that attaches to the lower part of the wing. I didn't do any of these. Um, I, I don't usually uh, put any bombs or missiles on any of my stuff just because it's just not the style that I'm going for. If I ever see an airplane in an air show, they usually don't have bombs attached. So um, I just, I like to look better without them. But someday maybe I'll put it, put together a huge, uh, huge like bash up of painting a thousand bombs, a thousand missiles, whatever from all my old kits. Maybe, <laughs> we'll see. You can see parts of the engine here. It, it's a really detailed engine. I'm surprised that they didn't have like any opening parts or anything on the um, on the cowling, but the detail in the engine was like a mask. It came in like seven or eight different parts, and it just looks really nice. The propeller looks really nice. Um, everything. Instructions are your standard Rebel instructions. They just tell you how to put this thing together just like normal, and you can see all those different colors. Oh man, there's a lot of different colors. So. Uh, yeah, holy cow, there's so many different colors. Um, it took it took a while for these guys. I mean, I normally don't do camo, so this was a different project for me. And since they were all three different colors on three different airplanes, and all three of those different colors uh, were different on every single airplane, it was just crazy, man. It was, a, it was a really nuts project that I had going on. But you can see that the engine came in six or seven different parts there. The landing gear were very dinky, but, uh, but they still went together good. Um, they haven't broken yet, so we'll see on the next move. Uh, yeah, and everything just goes together nice and smooth. So this is a good little kit. Blue one's on the left, camo's on the right, and, um, and the gray one's on the back. Fun. Let's get straight into it. So yeah, so first 
first things first is you just start off in the, in the cockpit. Start cracking out some parts, making sure you follow the directions and, and putting this cockpit together. Um, this had a bunch of pieces, so um, it was it was very it was very in depth on the inside, but but the detail of it wasn't wasn't too great on the inside. So you know you could do more to it, I guess, um, but can't really see in there I guess and whatever I didn't do anything very special to these to be honest I wasn't really that excited to to paint these models I, like the only thing I had that was going for me was that one of them was actually a flying uh, Sky Raider so that's the only thing I cared about um, but yeah I just painted it interior black and and that's just the way it went um, I looked up online <clears throat> two of these things two of these things so the camo versions for the Air Force the interiors were different color than the um, than the US Navy one so I guess the interior on the Air Force ones were black and gray and the interior on the Navy ones was actually green so that's the way I painted these models so um, the interiors are all a little bit different I looked up the seats. The seats were actually orange. You can see them in the background there. And um, I just did some weathering here on the instrument panel. This is a decent chipping effect to get some color on your instrument panel if some green stuff has like chipped away from the paint. And here I am painting some orange and, and red on the seats there. But another good way to do some uh, details on the instrument panel is just to take a dry brush of silver and lightly brush around all the details. And as you can see, it comes out really nicely looking pretty worn in, uh, pretty, pretty decent looking. Like I said, the interior details was like very minuscule and I don't put that much time and effort into instrument panels. What they give me is what I get and, um, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. I did some dry weathering here. Um, you can see some some kind of like dust and sand type of tank weathering I got going on, and I really like this stuff. It gets it some depth and texture, whereas some other just wet uh, weathering techniques just don't give it that that depth and texture that I like. So you can see here, I, I'm using all three shades and just really tickling some areas where it where it may look walked upon or touched or just dirty in some ways. And at this point, that's pretty much all I want to do with this model. Just get it to a decent point and um, continue forward. So let's put this thing inside of the fuselage. Yoink. And there it goes. And once you get it all together, it's decent looking. Um, who really? I mean, there isn't much going on there. Uh, <laughs> really, there's. You could spend a month building a whole interior and making it look perfect, yes, but I just. I'm doing three decal versions, so I'm just going to get these things together as quickly as possible, hopefully. Uh, pretty cool. The uh, the rudder does move. I, I do like that feature in models. If a rudder moves, I'm just tickled with the model kit and the design of it. I love that fact. And um, and yeah, so I keep it off for the sake of just doing all these different paints. Same thing with the wings. I kept them apart just to do all the paints. And um, but I think I decide to put them all together and paint it all together. But um, but yeah, I don't remember. Like I said, there's no detail in there, so I really did not want to do these wings up or down because there's just no detail, so I just ended up gluing them together just to make it look like a finished product when I was done with it. This is the cowling. It came in five or six different parts. You had to push it all together, and uh, it was, I gotta say, it was a bit of a pain. Like, that was, that was very difficult because they didn't line up too right, but... You're able to get them together with the right shaving of the um, the plastic around the sides, so that's one thing. 
I decided to actually paint this interior of the um, of the engine even though you weren't gonna see it um, and that was my fault I guess all you could see was like barely two pistons that came out of there so I don't know it was a waste of time for me if you wanted to do it yourself you could do it yourself um, you could actually make it so that um, the cowling wasn't fully built together and you can put some sticky tape so that you can take it off and see your engine but um, with this type of model uh, being that this airplane is really not that nostalgic I wouldn't even spend the time it's just one of those things that I just added to my collection so but I did put a good amount of effort and time into this engine as you can see and and it, w it paid off because it really did come out good it's just the fact that I can't see it is is the whole point that I'm making so if I were to do an actual engine this is how I do it and I guess you get to see this because <laughs> most Marvel you know most because uh, most Revel engines only come in two parts you know or even one part sometimes so I masked off all the stuff put it all together the canopy went on very good it was a perfect fit probably the best fit I've had on a Revel model yet I do say so so painted the same the outside the same color as the interior and started to get to work on these wings I actually built these at the same time as building two B24 Liberators, which was a crazy project. I did them all at the same time. Oh yeah, and and at the same time as P three P39s that were three different colors too. So um, there's another video on my YouTube channel about the P39s. That was a fun project. But here we go again for the final coat, and this is finished color of the gray one. I'm uh, just using a strand standard gray for the AD5, um, but also white. I believe that was primer, but uh, and your basic pre-shading. This is with my old airbrush, which was a little bit more difficult to work with than my newer one. But um, you know, you can't really go wrong with any any type of airbrush. They're all gonna work just about the same. Maybe not a Greco, but who knows. Maybe Christmas will be really nice this year. So now I'm just pre-shading and I'm really not spending too much time with this process because it's pre-shading and you know in the end you're going to put the paint where you want it with the actual finished color so um, getting it the black and the right parts is important it's just it doesn't have to be that clean so I just do it as pr practically and as quickly as possible and as much as I can do. Um, because this honest, this process drives me insane, to be honest with you. Um, I like finish coating, but pre-shading, it's just my hand goes numb after so much time spent going down each line and and trying to trying to do the best I can. I forget sometimes that this stuff gets covered. So just do the best you can, do it as quickly as possible, and in the end, you'll have a really, really good result, which I really didn't spend too much time, as you can see, appreciating these things. I did some light texturing with my airbrush and then filled in lightly where it needed to go with a, with a white underbelly. So, I mean, that's just the way it goes sometimes with, with appreciating with me. Other times, I get a little bit too intense with it. I go crazy. I do five different colors and texturing and weathering and so I've used salt before uh, some crazy stuff when I get into it but with these models I was just like you know what this is gonna look nice it's gonna look good from underneath and it's gonna have that effect that I want here's the finished color of the gray as you can see there I did not do much appreciating on the gray these things were pretty clean looking when I looked up on looked them up online there really wasn't uh, too much like crazy weathering that I could do to it and I really wanted to keep that effect and make them look used but new um, I wasn't going for a, a crazy a crazy like you know weathered crappy looking airplane with these I wanted them looking a little bit shiny a little bit new maybe used for a year or two that's kind of the look that I was going for so I just fill in the areas where the pre-shading is not and just keep doing that until 
I have the look and the finish look that I want. And that's pretty, pretty much how it goes. Um, after I get most of the uh, squares like lightly in, add some water to it and then do another coat and just keep doing that. Add some more water to it, do another coat and just keep doing that until I get the finished look that I want and making sure that all my corners around each square are tight and nice and um, looking like really professional and looking realistic at this point. Just slowly deleting each panel line as possible. As much as possible or as much as you like. like then just add a little bit of water and paint all the way over the model itself. And here's some more appreciating for you if you weren't already bored already. And this is the camo version. So this one I spent a little bit more time on. The gray and white one I was like Z -Z 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 zip 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 done. Um, this one I took my time with just because I don't do camo often. Um, I've done camo only once before this, and it worked out good. It just it was my first model back into modeling, so I didn't know exactly what I was doing. But uh, doing this camo, I wanted a really nice weathered look to it. Uh, I just felt that it was better for this model, and it would change it up a little bit from that gray. I use the same technique on this, just lightly fill in each area, and I and uh, I just did it as close to it as possible to the directions. Um, I didn't really look up anything on where exactly the camo needed to be on uh, online or anything like that. I just did it according to the directions. So sometimes with model or Revel model kits, that's a bad way to go. It just doesn't work out for you as much as you'd like, but. Um, in this instance, it's camo, so it looks nice and it looks weathered and it looks close enough for me. With camo, the trick is to get it in the areas that you want it um, and not go overboard with too much overlap because then you could screw up all your other panel lines and then your panel lines don't look don't look even like the paint will overlap too much on the panel line and it will look newer than some of the parts that didn't get overlapped as much so be really careful about where you put all of your paint and stuff just make sure you get the paint where you want it control the airbrush control where you want that paint and do the same with this green here and I'm actually using forest green for this one I did not use olive drab um, so it was a little bit richer in color and I just really like that contrast And there's the blue. I didn't even appreciate the blue. I just sent it. <laughs> um, just because appreciating blue is literally useless and unless you're, you paint it white first, then you can appreciate. But uh, yeah, I just 
freaking blasted it, dude. I was like, no, nope, just gonna blast this one. I think I had it with pre-shading for the day or something like that. The gray came out nice though, and um, and yeah, you can see those ailerons and and flaps were painted white, but yeah, it's just funny. I knew that I had skipped a little bit of steps on the uh, on the blue on the blue dude, but that's what happens when you do three miles at the same time. You just uh, you want to get these things done. You want to get the video done and you just move forward with this and you just send it. Um, I think I did some some other effects to it afterwards. Like, uh, I, I might have lightened up the tint on the, all the blue stuff and, and put it in the panel lines, but I'm not sure, I really don't remember. These were, these were built a long time ago. Here I am putting some uh, effects on the, the smoke coming out the exhaust. Um, this was a fun process and looked it up online and saw which way the wind went. And I did my best here. Uh, no, this was a $80 airbrush. It does its job, but it definitely has its quirks for sure. And um, I was really, really a beginner when it came to airbrushing, not knowing what the heck to do, honestly. Um, I am literally just using black primer to do this effect. Um, that has, that's all I've ever used is just black primer because it's real nice and flat and it has a tiny bit of, tiny, tiny bit of shine to it and that's it. And I just really like that effect. So it looks good on the model too. I'm um, just doing light airbrush coats, just making sure that it's real like airy. You can kind of see the paint behind it and making sure that that guns, that smoke kind of looks pretty sweet. <laughs> Yep, so as these move back, it kind of follows the, the wing and stuff. So now we're going to get into the detail, decals. Um, there was a lot of cool decals in this kit, especially with the arrows, but they're way off scale. Like these should be a quarter of the size, not nearly as big as what they are in the actual kit. So that's a little bit of a, a, bad, a bad thing about the decals, that they're just too big. And I saw my rudder fall off there, but um, but it is what it is. That's just that's just the way decals go sometimes, you know. Yeah, the rescue whatever, rescue signs and stuff. They're 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 supposed to be way smaller. They're supposed to be a quarter of that size, but I guess it still looks cool. Now this was the ultimate tricky part. This was the most concerning part. This is a Model Master Opaque Blue. And this is what I use to paint the, the back windows, which are actually blue on the real thing. Um, this came out so good. I was so nervous about this situation with the opaque blue crap. Painting my windshield is like, just something you don't do. You just don't paint your windshield. It's just crazy to think about, but when you do it and it comes out perfect just like on b17s you do the opaque green look and it looks so sweet and you just feel like an accomplished professional modeler so here is my dudes and you guys enjoy the rest of your day enjoy the rest of these photos they're all up here for you and i will catch you in the next video thank you so much consider subscribing and i will see you later let's get back to building